Welcome along physics fans to this my fourth video in the series on materials for pre-university, A-level or high school physics. We're going to look in this video at what happens to energy stored when something is stretched. Here we have a very nice force extension graph. Now you know that force is measured in newtons and extension is measured in meters. Now for every graph you ever see in physics, there are two things you can ask yourself, amongst others I suppose. One is, does the gradient mean anything? And the other is, does the area under the graph mean anything? Well, in this case, we've got newtons and meters. So the area under the graph is going to have the units of force times uh, extension, whatever that unit is. Or well, the units of that is newtons, and the units of extension is meters. So it's newton meters. Now, if you're on the ball, which of course you are if you're watching this video, you know that work done is force times distance or newton meters are ah, same unit newton meters newton meters and work done you know is a measure of energy transferred which of course is measured in joules therefore the area under this graph is joules and it represents the energy that's stored in the wire and of course because it's a triangle the area under that graph or the energy stored there is known as the elastic strain energy and it's going to be equal to a half times the force times the extension, which could obviously be written as delta L as well. We can also take this a step further and consider that we know that the, the force applied to the wire is equal to K times the extension. And so we can now substitute for this force using that force, and that will lead us to another formula for the energy, which is going to be a half Kx times x, which is going to be a half kx squared. So that's the elastic strain energy too. Now, it's at this point that I can go off on one of my really excited tangents. So I'm going to keep it really brief. Isn't it interesting, probably not you might think, that this formula for the elastic strain energy takes the same shape as does the kinetic energy formula. How about that? I wonder what deeper mysteries that is pointing to leaving that to one side now let's consider what the area underneath a stress strain graph is going to be well who would have thought this too is going to have the units of joules only this time it's joules per unit volume per unit volume in other words really to be honest a meter cubed so what this is telling us the area under a stress strain graph again is telling us the elastic strain energy for a meter cubed of the material as you stretch it. Now just try and get your head around what a meter cubed of copper looks like. It's big. So it's going to store an awful lot of energy if you manage to stretch it at all. Hence this one can be flipping big. And just to clarify there, the energy per unit volume, unit volume is going to be equal to a half stress times strain 